Okay, I want to show you how to set up a messaging instruction. It's not complicated at all. Uh, it's important to note, though, that I have a, a, I have a program running in a, an L81 processor that uh, has a, a counter that ramps up to 359, 0 to 359, and then resets back to 0. So what I'm going to do is set up a messaging instruction to read that count value from the uh, remote processor. And what I'll do is, first I'll start with a, a new program, an L16ER. I'm going to call this uh, MSG1, message1. One. I have no modules. First thing I'll do is I'll right click on Ethernet, add a new module, and I'm looking for an L81. There it is, L81E. I'm going to call this thing uh, Node L81E. So I've got my uh, remote node added to the program. I'll go ahead and go into the main program. Um, input instruction. I need to give it a name for the control block. So I'll call it uh, node L81E. And I'll right click new. All looks good. Create that. Change the scope to the controller. Okay. Here on the triple dots, I'll click on that. And uh, here's where I set up all the details inside. So we're going to do a, a data table read, a read instruction. My source element is um, ramp.acc. My local destination will be received underscore ramp. It's going to be a new tag. It's going to be a dent. That's good. The communications path is this path. And that's all I have to do. So it's a polled instruction, so I need a, a timer. I'll set up a timer that will uh, pulse it every so often. So let's do a TON. I'm going to call this my pulse, pulse timer. I'll, I'll do it every, um, every half second. So I'm going to use the done bit on that pulse timer to trigger the, the message instruction. And of course, pulse needs to reset itself, so we'll do a, a not pulse. Okay. And uh, just to make it easier so I can see the data that's coming in, I will add a compare function and my data is going into received dot received, received ramp and I'll just make it the same. See that it's two copies of the same thing. And uh, my my run will end in a no op which does nothing. So let's Let's select a destination. My destination will be dot 15 on my network. So if I have any errors at this point, the download will cancel. So it looks, it looks good. I should have checked it before I went to this before I downloaded it, but it's okay. 
So as I look at it, I can see a lot of things going on. The pulse is running. My message instruction is done constantly because it's happening very quickly. I'm reading in a ramp value, but you see how it's not, you know, it's not incrementing evenly. That's because the pulse is kind of slow. Let's change it to 100 milliseconds. And, uh, see, it's still a little choppy down here. Let's change it to 25 milliseconds. A little bit better. Let's change it to 10 milliseconds. Okay. Still not, still not working exactly right. How about every millisecond? Still, still not doing exactly, you know, it's not following it one, on, you know, one to one. And that's because uh, of a couple of things, probably. Um, the ramp data that I'm receiving is, you know, it's network traffic and it has to cross the network. Um, the ramp is changing too quickly in the, in the remote program but I get a snapshot of what it's doing. Um, one thing I could do is I could trend, I could trend the uh, received value just to see what it's doing. So let's watch that for a minute. It actually looks pretty smooth. I think what we're seeing on the screen is the, the screen update time is actually pretty sluggish. So uh, it looks like I'm actually reading every value from the ramp in the remote processor, but the screen lag time here makes it look like it's not. So let's slow this down again. Let's start slowing it down and look at the trend, see what it looks like. Looks like we're still catching every uh, count here. Let's slow it down some more. Go back to half a second. Uh, and let's slow this down some. It still looks okay. Uh, I guess at this point I'm trying to break it. So let's slow it down to every second. And I think now I'm getting some irregular data. It looks like I'm counting every other pulse. Uh, it's important to know that the messaging instruction is asynchronous. I ask it to message. It goes through a series of changes with the remote controller, and I get a number back. So if my sampling rate is too slow, let's go every five seconds. What I'll see is in my data will jump in huge increments like that. <clears throat> it's no longer, you know, really close to real time. Uh, you know, sampling tells us that if we sample at twice the rate of the data itself, like the frequency of the data, we'll get an accurate uh, sample. So if I'm trying to sample in real time, I need to know how quickly the data is changing on the remote end. So if it's changing every second, if I, if I sample it twice a second, that should be okay. If I sample it four times a second, that's even better. The only problem is, you know, every time I poll for remote data, I sort of, you know, I give it more work to do. I, I give the processor work to do. Now, I don't want to poll constantly to where it's only able to do uh, communication activities. You'll get to a point where it will just start to... Uh, either time out or just, you know, not give you accurate results. So you can find a balance. Ideally, you're, you're not trying to receive data in real time. You're trying to receive, you know, representative data that you can use in your program to do something. But trending is very useful. I don't know if you've noticed it before, probably not if I haven't explained it, but you can trend uh, data values over time and you can go back and look at them. So if I stop this, and scroll back in time, I can see how the how the system has been responding. Okay, let's go way back. Uh, this is only taking uh, 10 seconds worth of data though. So you want to change your chart properties, like under sampling, for example, you can, you can do a 10 minute sample time. 
um, every 10 milliseconds seems like seems a little bit excessive there. Let's say we do like every 500 milliseconds and then run that and you can see, you know, it just samples and stores data for you. Um, so it's a very useful tool. I like to use, uh, I like to use sampling and trending whenever I've got something that I uh, just can't pin down the problem and I need to see what is really going on. Uh, keep in mind that the screen lag time can be substantial. So you're not able to see things in real time on the screen, even though you, you think that it is, it's really not. So let's go back to every half second. And here we go, it's ramping again. So that's the message instructions, pretty simple. The, the tricky part is getting all the parameters correct in your triple dots here under the message block. You've got to get everything just right. Uh, if, if there's a data mismatch between the source data and the received data, you'll get an error message. Uh, any number of ways to mess this up. But uh, once you get it set up correctly, you pretty much just leave it alone. It works great.